We will have Julius uh, Lawton back. Uh, he's a PhD student in the team of Christopher Sodling, part of the Fener Lab in the Karolinska Institute in Estocolm, Sweden. His projects focus on the study of immune response to acute uh, PFLC and malaria using the system's immunology approach to understand the mechanisms of acquisition and maintenance of immune memory to malaria. Julius? Thank you, Emma, for this nice introduction. Um, okay. Can you see my slides? Nope. No. Oh, okay. Yep. No, you can Here see. we are. Okay. Yes. Great. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my research or one of our latest studies, uh, where we used the systems immunology approach to identify a role of cytophilic antibodies in shaping the innate immune response to falciparum malaria. Uh, just without going into too much detail here. Uh, we know there are two stages where the, par where the parasite encounters our immune system in the asymptomatic liver stage and then in the symptomatic blood stage. That is the cause for the symptoms such as fevers and chill, chills and headache. We also know that antibodies play a central role in protection against uh, malaria, but due to the complexity of the parasite um, that expresses over a thousand different proteins at any given stage uh, of the life cycle, uh, it's quite difficult for our immune system to build up um, protective immunity rapidly. So it takes uh, many episodes and time for us of our immune system to build up um, like immunity as shown here in this plot. Um, quite interestingly though, the, um, the incidences of severe malaria drop quite rapidly after just a couple of infections. And uh, this rapid disease tolerance is not due to like a reduction in parasitemia, but rather due to some kind of tolerance mechanism that is um, due to a more controlled inflammation response upon infection. In, in our lab and in my project, um, we're trying to understand how the human immune response adapts to repeated infections. And how do we do that in Sweden? Uh, we, we have a cohort that was started in 2011 by Professor Anna Fernat um, at the Karolinska University Hospital here in Stockholm, Sweden, where we included travelers returning from Sub-Saharan Africa with clinical malaria cases and um, followed them up over, over one year after their infection and uh, sampled them with their peripheral blood. And within this cohort, we have different levels of previous exposure to malaria, enabling us them to categorize them into primary infected individuals and previously exposed individuals. And by looking at the two groups, uh, just like when they presented with, with their malaria case, we see that primary, in, primary infected individuals have higher parasitemia and also stay a bit longer in the hospital. So we then try to understand, or we, we aim to understand what is the underlying mechanism or how can we explain this based on the immune system or in the immune response. And for that, we use the systems level analysis approach where we, um, instead of looking at one defined cell type, look at all cell types and a lot of um, plasma proteins. And that's that we did with um, uh, the proximity extension assay uh, by Olink, uh, looking at 92 proteins in each sample, uh, and then profiling up to 54 uh, immune cell types using flow cytometry. And all of this data that we got out of this, um, we, we, we handled with a data-driven method uh, called multi-omics factor analysis that enables us uh, to align um, variation that's in the data along a specific um, axis or uh, align, um, align the data along axis of um, time after symptom onset to identify what is the variation of data along this, this time after onset. And um, so this, this method can, can be basically seen as a multi-omics dimensionality reduction method uh, simplified. 
Um, and you can read this plot uh, similar as a PCA, uh, where you see that in factor, factor one is capturing most of the variance and data that explains like the time after onset from, from beginning up to one year. And when plotting these factor values against the time after onset, uh, the factor one values, um, we see that um, positive factor one values, they associate actually with these acute uh, samples and the, the negative factor one values, they associate with the convalescent or like everything that comes after that. And by looking at the, at the top features that drive this factor one, uh, we could actually um, describe the immune landscape after a single malaria infection um, are ordered according to the, the, the time after symptom onset. And as you can hopefully appreciate in, this, in the seep map, you see here in the beginning when they all have this acute malaria, we see a lot of um, pro-inflammatory cytokines, uh, such as interferon gamma, IL-6, CXL-10, uh, but then also activated CD, CD4, CD8 T cells that are, that are known to be um, activated upon this infection. But then uh, when, when the infection is, is treated, um, we see that other cell types come up over time, over this time of one year, uh, such as NK cells or gamma delta T cells. Um, so we then ask, how does the acute response impact this longitudinal dynamics? And by utilizing comprehensive correlation analysis, we could identify that uh, acute, the, these proteins that associate with the acute um, inflammation response are, are highly uh, associated with gamma delta T cells. And uh, especially with the V delta two T cell subset, um, so meaning the more pro-inflammatory cytokines the individuals have in, in the acute response, the more the V delta two T cells expand. And we, we then ask, okay, how is this, this association impacted by, imi by immune memory? Uh, and since we have these two groups in our, in our cohort of primary infected versus previously exposed, we could draw this com comparison quite easily. Uh, so looking at into the cytokines that were associated, we see that previously exposed individuals have overall lower levels um, of, of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, even though just three are significant, uh, you, you can see the um, overall trend. And when looking at into the associated uh, cell subsets or gamma delta T cells, we see that especially the V delta two T cells, um, the previously exposed individuals have a different dynamics compared to the primary infected individual. We can confirm this by using um, a linear mixed effect models, model where we, where we see that they are like significantly uh, less expanding in the previously exposed group. And this has been reported before that gamma delta T cells become dysfunctional and repeated malaria so, and that they are associated to clinical tolerance. And in a recent publication, um, gamma delta T cells have been associated with some antiparasitic functions um, via granulozyme uh, or CD16 dependent phagocytosis. Uh, and especially the CD16 dependent phagocytosis uh, was, was interesting to us. And we looked into the CD16 expressing gamma delta T cells in our data. And as you can see here, the dynamics between the groups, uh, between the two groups for, for total D gamma delta T cells and the V delta to negative T cell are quite similar. But in the, when looking at the V delta to positive T cells, uh, it's only in the, in the group of the primary infected individuals that this uh, subset is expanding. And also when, when looking then at, at activation markers, we, we can clearly see that um, previously exposed have, previously exposed individuals have less expansion or less activation of these cells. We then looked into, into the, the data set uh, to look at more classical CD16 expressing cells which are monocytes. And by comparing the monocytes at the acute time point, we can actually see a completely different picture where 
the previously exposed individuals just have higher numbers um, of these SCD16 um, expressing monocytes. And this is quite interesting because these uh, monocytes are usually seen to be more pro-inflammatory, um, but this, yeah, doesn't, doesn't really reflect the, the way it's reflected in the protein data that we have. But overall, monocytes and repeated infections have been recently um, described to, to become some kind of innate memory imprint. Uh, and also in a, in a recent study in a mouse model, they could show that subsequent malaria um, infections reduces actually the inflammatory cytokine uh, response in mice. And this might be due to some epigenetic re reprogramming and, and monocytes shown in an in vitro model. So due to CD16 being a functional receptor, um, we were then repurposing a parasite-specific antibody data set for individuals of the same cohort that uh, our lab published previously, uh, looking at the blood stage antigens um, and in the specific uh, IgG subclasses, subclass response over time. Um, but instead of utilizing the, the eight antigens, we calculated here a cumulative response score, getting some kind of value for each subclass um, response instead of like for individual antigens. And when correlating this to the pro-inflammatory cytokines that we, that we associate with the acute response, we see that there is a strong negative correlation. Uh, and especially the IgG3 response is strongly negative is strongly negatively correlated with the pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as interferon gamma, CXC11. And this, this is also, we can also see this with the, when correlating the IgG3 response to the V delta 2 T cell response. So overall, these uh, IgG3 responses associated with reduced inflammation and reduced gamma delta, uh, V delta 2 gamma delta T cell expansion. So based on our data, we suggest a model um, where antibody-mediated contr parasite control and dampened inflammation um, is like leading to this um, T gamma delta T cell tolerance. And uh, we, yeah, we could show that previous exposure is um, associated with, with the stronger acidophilic antibody response, especially of the IgG3 type subtype. Um, previous exposure is also um, showing more CD16 monocytes, uh, dampened inflammation, and in turn, um, less V delta 2 T cell expansion. And we summarized uh, the, this finding in a, these findings in a manuscript that you can look into for, my, for more details and by archive. And otherwise, I would like to thank all uh, of the malaria infected returning travelers, my lab, um, and my supervisors, Anna Fanat and Christopher Sundling, and you for listening. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Julius, very, very, very interesting uh, talk. Uh, I will start uh, with a question in the Q&A chat. And um, I have questions after that, Emma. So. Uh, yes, I also have one question. <laughs> um, but let's start just be yeah, let's uh, do the prior left, yeah. to yeah. the attendees. Um, so Roland Funway uh, asks, could there be any variation in parasitemia cytokines between those in South Africa and the returning travels who are not immune? Uh, could, could you repeat the question? Could there be any variation in parasitemia cytokines, uh, parasitemia cytokines ratio, I guess, uh, between those in South Africa and returning travelers who are non-immune? Um, I don't know if I if I understand the question right, but um, yeah. so we looked at returning travelers in, in Sweden, and um, all of them presented with clinical malaria. Um, and of course, they have different backgrounds, but um, yeah, uh, like we didn't look at people from South Africa, so. Okay. Um, well, um, there's another question and the chat says, thanks a lot for this informative presentation. I'm wondering how this result from 
um, how these results from point of care point of view informs malaria program? Great question. Oh, yeah, um, that's a good question. I think we, we need to do some more follow-ups to, to be more, um, more sure about our findings that are like more on the descriptive level, but uh, we, we, we plan and we, we've already done some follow-up studies that go more into the mechanism to really prove what we're, what we're claiming here. Uh, but I think it's, it's a long way before we can like uh, implement this in some guidelines. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, Sanjay, uh, he's asking, did you try to see what is the main antigen recognized by IgG3 isotype in previously infected patients? Um, not, not in this study. I think okay. it, it is mentioned in this study from Iman at all, uh, but not in the story since this was not the uh, scope of, 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 our, of, this, of this project. Because we were mainly interested in the in the overall um, subclass response. Um, yeah. Great. Um, there's another question here. Uh, we know that immunity to malaria is strongly controlled by endemicity of malaria, where moderate to high endemic areas have immunity to malaria compared to lower endemic areas. What's this taken? Was this taken in consideration during this study? Um, not to my knowledge. Um, I think the, the, the individuals that we recruited to our study, they, they traveled to different countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, but uh, we didn't um, stratify in, in that sense, our study. Great, uh, thanks. Uh, so another question, any idea of the duration of these responses among the previously exposed cohort? Um, duration of response in, in what way? I will think <laughs> as like lasting in, uh, uh, presence of those uh, antibodies. Yeah, I mean, so when we, we had a questionnaire to this, to this, um, to the cohort participants, uh, where we asked about previous malaria exposure and um, so we don't have clinical records on the last previous exposure, but um, it's be between, I think an average was maybe 10 years self-reported last time malaria exposure. Um, so yeah, if this answers the question. Okay. Um, and there's another two more questions. Um, so time, yes. Um, what is the range of numbers of previously infections in your travelers and where there are significant where there are significant times between their exposures? Um, mm, no, so so we had 17 previous primary infected individuals and 37 uh, previously exposed individuals about the numbers. And we tried to 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 kind of make them more equal to to start our analysis with the time after symptom onset um, to to make them more okay. similar to each other because um, the time until symptom development should be should be quite quite equal yeah. Emma Leon is back so maybe we should yes. get um, back to him after yeah after Julius so we'll have a couple more questions and uh, okay. Um, can we know whether the antigen you use in your studies are among the potential va vaccine candidates? Um, uh, so, so the antigens that were that were part of, of these um, that we okay. measured were AMA one, MSP two, MSP one, RH five. So um, yeah. Some, I'll say. Okay, and but yeah. yeah, no, go ahead, Jules. No, no, the, for for that, uh, for for more details, I would refer to the to the publication of Yuma Nadal in uh, BMC Medicine, two thousand nineteen. Okay. Um, we have one more question, and then Rahul, you want to make your request? Uh, do your no, I'll, I'll I'll talk to Julius later. Just finish this, and maybe we should get Leon back in. Okay, so right. how do you encounter 
how do you encounter confounding factors such as co-infections with other parasites, especially in quantifying gamma interferon? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, up, to, up to my knowledge, uh, we didn't run any, any other um, parasite screening, um, but uh, since, since the people are like resident in Sweden, uh, I think the risk for, for other parasitic infection is quite low. Um, but uh, we excluded all, all like major comorbidities in, in this cohort. Uh, 